Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making 3D Zelda like wizard games and game maker. Um, let's see, so this is probably going to be the last video in which I worry about things like game state and inventory. Um, there's only a couple things left that I want to do in this regard, I want to be able to keep track of player health and also have a, a health pickup item, uh, as one does. Um, and I also want to be able to save and load the, uh, like the player data. Um, serialize that and deserialize that to a file, obviously. So, in the last couple of these videos, I was working on things that you can, uh, items that you can pick up off the ground and add them to a collection of sorts. And, uh, this is gonna take a moment to start because it's the first run of the day. Um, let's see, what do we have? We have regular currency items, you know, ye old birdie bots, every flavored beans. Uh, we have collectible cards, which, um, probably should have a little bit more, uh, Fancy uh, flair when you pick them up or something like that, but we'll um, We'll work that for now. Uh, there will definitely be like a polished stage of this game later on uh, Also, the uh, the way that the camera can just like go through solid walls is something that I should probably um, Make a little nicer eventually, but uh Again polish So the first thing I think I'm going to do is have a health Stat. So I'll have a, um, let's see, we have self.currency. I can say self.health equals, let's say, 10. And also, uh, max health can also be equal to 10. And if you really want to do this the proper way, we can initialize max health first and then set health equal to max health. Um, interfaces for, for modifying that value, um, you know, Uh, add health, uh, remove health, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I want to go as far as saying... I guess I can. It's not like I'm calling this uh, line of code enough to for it to really slow the game down or anything. I also might say... Get health percent, uh, which is going to be exactly what you think it is. Like that. Uh, that'll be a fraction between 0 and 1. Uh, for add health, um, what am I doing? I want to say... Uh, we don't want to be allowed to go above the max health. Uh, for remove health, um, we're going to go the other way, say the minimum of... Or sorry, the maximum of zero and health minus amount. And uh, it, we can also do a death check here. Um, I won't like worry about how that's going to be implemented yet. But we can, um, we can have the player die when they run out of health, uh, whatever form that ends up looking like. So that's going to be our, um, that's going to be our health stat. I need to open source control, don't die. Alright, what did we do here? Added a health system, very easy. Uh, enemies are, are probably going to have something similar later on, but we'll worry about that some other time. Um, let's see, I specified a health pickup item here. Uh, in this game state and inventory thing, so I suppose, um, where are my, what are my gameplay objects, uh, 3D objects, pick, pickups, um, we can give ourselves a health pickup, um, let's see, I don't know what I want this to look like now, um, probably like a floating heart or something like that, I don't have one prepared, that's uh, that's gonna be ha that's gonna have to be something that I'll have to like draw later as some kind of heart image, but uh, I'll probably give it the same behavior. I'll have it like bounce up and down and um, rotate on the spot and just be like a heart shape. Um, let's see. Uh, this is uh, for drawing the heart the heart sprite, which I don't really need, so I can just get rid of that. And uh, the heart pickup on collection uh, game state uh, add health, and then we can just uh, add one health. Maybe later on there will be some kind of full restore health pickup that'll add like a bunch of health or something like that. And then uh, 
Um, yes, I could use a string template for this, but I was in a hurry and I forgot about that. So if I, um, if I just spawn some of these in the world, um, let's see, this is not going to be a permanent fixture in the game, but if I just spawn, um, one of these in the world, and if I run into them, I should see a message saying you have some number of health. Um, I guess I'll initialize this to um, max health minus one so that, uh, let's say max health minus two and spawn three of them. And that way, um, when, I, uh, when I pick them up in sequence, you have nine health, you have 10 health, and then you can't go above 10 health. So uh, our health cannot go above the max health, which is, which is good. Okay. Um, that's fun. That wasn't too terribly difficult. I like it when things aren't too terribly difficult. Um, I can drop that in the done pile. Um, I probably should add a deck and I'm not gonna give it like, let's, let's make this art. Um, art stuff that I've got to make. And I will do this on my own. I won't make this a, uh, an on video thing, but for example, a health pickup. And I also want to assign points to these because I will be doing them on my own. Uh, we also have, for example, collectible cards. Uh, whatever that may take the form of. And um, I even might go as far to say a currency stat. That's going to be another one. I'm going to try and remember to, to put down things on this list when I think of them. Because um, I know that there's going to... Obviously, there's going to be things like that. All right. Um, next thing I've got to do is a save system to save and load uh, the player data. And that's going to be... Um, we're not going to be saving everything in the game. We're not going to be... Uh, I can close some of these, can't I? Um, let me think. We're not going to be... Uh, like saving and loading the player's position today or the status of enemies or the status of like which treasure chest you have and haven't opened and that kind of thing. But uh, I'm going to get started with the easy stuff. So things like the player's currency, the player's health, the player's known spells and uh, what have you. Uh, by the way, if the player is ever able to, you know, pick up like a bunch of Zelda heart containers and extend their health or um, whatever, like the, uh, the wizard cards that you can do in, in Potter games, um, might change out this uh, this system. Might um, come up with a, a better, a more robust way of figuring out the player's max health, but um, for now that's good enough. So I do need to, um, I think I need to revisit this. So when I said add spell, we're just gonna add like the name of the object or whatever. This is, um, at the very least I'll have to do some conversion when we save this. Because uh, I can't save the like the ID of the object directly. Um, you could for a long time, and then bad things would have happened when you tried to load it out. And uh, a couple months ago, Game Maker updated so that you just can't do that in the first place, which is good because you shouldn't be doing that. But um, I'm going to need a way to connect the spell types to the like you know spell objects, um, which are actually saved in this um in this array of spells, and I could engineer a system to do like an associative array, one, the, the spell type onto the spell object and vice versa, but instead I think I will just, since there's not that many of them, just do a little switch statement and um, we'll just convert it when we save and load. So anyway, you know what I can do? I can use a region for this, which I probably should be doing. Uh, let's say... Save is going to be a method which is going to spit out a blob of JSON which you can just stick in a, in a file or send over a network or whatever, don't care. Um, and load is going to be a function which uh, takes a bit of JSON as input and then does the reverse. All right. So firstly, we can save the easy attributes. So I'm going to say JSON is going to equal um, a, a clone of our of our easy values, so our, our things that can just be saved one to one. Um, 
what is it, currency. Um, the other ones are health underscore max and health. Uh, that's funny. I thought you were allowed to use the JSON shorthand with like instance variables like that. I don't remember that breaking at any point. Anyway, that's going to be our um, like our our boring like fundamental essential values that we're saving. Uh, we'll deal with cards, quests, and known spells later on. I think I actually did cards and quests and known spells in a sensible way. Um, when you collect a a card, for example, uh, we're just going to be saving the card ID. Um, which is just going to be a boring little string. That's not going to be a complex data structure or anything like that, which means that I, I should just be able to, um, to save the cards like that. Uh, quests, I believe the, uh, the intent is to do the, basically the same thing. Uh, I don't have an example of it anywhere, but, um, we're going to map the quests ID uh, onto uh, into this uh, this map, and uh, where where would I have put that? Quest data, yeah. So the quest ID is going to be like. Uh, also, just a string, just the same way that the uh, the card ideas are. So, I can have the um, cards and quests can do the same thing because they're not complex data. Um, spells I'm going to have to do a little bit more for. So JSON dot spells equals uh, actually. Array create um, so we've got that and then we can loop over the known spells list and we can say um, JSON dot spells index I is going to equal Oh no, I'm going to want this to be the switch, aren't I? Uh, case, obj, spell, bounce. I'll just go through them in, in order, I guess. Um, json.spells index i equals e spell type stop bounce. And then we'll just do this for. Uh, however many of these uh, bounce, flower, push, time, unlock. Um, flower, push, uh, time, and unlock. Uh, and then once we've done all this, return the JSON. All right, so that's going to be our save system. Um, I guess... Uh, would it make sense to just uh, toss that in, like in the step event, if keyboard check pressed? Um, games state dot save. So if we hit the backspace key, we're just gonna. Um, we're just going to JSON stringify that. Um, if we uh, save this to a file, what's the easiest way for me to do that nowadays? I'm just going to save it to a file called test.json. Um, file text write string. Um, write the JSON. File text close. Uh, this should save like the amount of currency that I have or the amount of uh, cards that I have or 
other such other such things. Uh, before I before I do that, let's uh, have some cards to actually save in the first place. And now, if I go run into these. Um, what did I say? The backspace key will save our game. And if I go into my into my test dot test.json folder, we have saved ourselves some spell IDs. So one, seven, two, four, and five, because they're not in order apparently. And uh, one, seven, two, four, and five. Uh One, two, oh, mind read. Oh, and illuminate. Okay, so there are a couple spells that are, I put down in the list, but I didn't implement. Maybe I'll come back to them, maybe I won't. Uh, as for cards, we've got the daisy card. Uh, we've got 10 health, zero currency. It looks like that worked as intended. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, uh, maybe instead of hit, hitting the backspace key, um, I can... Uh, instead of hitting the backspace key to save, I can do, hit the backspace key to load. What would that look like? Uh, our f equals file text open read. Um, our JSON is equals JSON parse uh, file text read string uh, file text close. Um, and then game state dot load like that. And uh, now I've got to implement that, of course. First, first we can do that. And then uh, if we get around to implementing a load for this, we can just go in the same reverse order. I kind of want to to validate the data here. This can this is something that can really get messy. Uh, like if the player messes with their save file, I don't really care if they try to give themselves like infinity money, but I do care if they try to give themselves like, you know, like pineapple pizza money, something that will literally break the game. But on the other hand, if they if the player does that, then that's kind of something that they should be implicitly aware that they've done. And I don't really want to spend a great deal of time engineering yet another system to prevent the player from from doing that because. Every time I do that, it takes a lot longer than I think it will. Um, by the way, I should mention that there are a handful of functions, static get and static set, that you can use to essentially just clone data from JSON onto a constructor like this, but um, like onto a, an instance of a class with all the class's static members and everything. But since I am doing, I am doing this, I'm not going to do that. If I wasn't doing this, I would probably give it a shot, but I'm going to, uh, going to have to do a little bit of a conversion here on the way out. So that's not really an option. Anyway, we've got, uh, max health. We've got regular health. Um, we've got, uh, cards that we've collected and we've got, uh, that was already on my clipboard. We've got quests, so uh, that should be easy. Um, known spells can be array create array length json dot uh, spells, and then we can uh, we can do the opposite. We can iterate over this and uh, map, uh, for example, e spell types dot bounce onto onto this. And instead of saying json.spells, it's going to be self.known spells. Something like that. All right. And then like, if this breaks horribly, then the game's going to error. Don't tamper with your save file. If I was making a, a more professional level game that wasn't just me doing this for a half hour once a week on Wednesdays, then might consider doing that a little bit more strongly than I have today. But uh, let's, uh, let's budget our time a little more wisely than that. Uh, I'm going to want a way to check to make sure this works. So we can, let me just print out some values, show debug message. Uh, so we can print out like our currency and some other values. Um, 
cards and quests, and then whether or not I know a spell should become self-evident. If I comment out this part where I'm manually adding the spells to myself, uh, I will no longer be able to walk around waving my wand at things. So this uh, treasure chest, I can no longer wave my wand at things, but if I were to hit the backspace key, it is going to crash. Okay, so JSON parse error, why is it doing that? Um, file text open read. Um, are we getting an invalid JSON string? Uh, okay, so the file is found, and oh, that's right. Okay, so uh, it's not all as one line. Fine. We'll do this the buffer way. Buffer load. Um, buffer delete. Uh, buffer read. Buffer text. That's like the real way that you would do this. I don't know why I did, why I used the file function. I don't think I've thought about those in like a really long time. So, um, no currency, 10 health, 10 max health. Uh, we've got the daisy card and I can still not wave my wand at that thing. Uh, I don't know why that would be. Oh, that's why. No, 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 stop, wait, no, JSON. All right. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, that array was populated with zeros. So, uh, now I can do that. I can cast push, I can cast bounce, I can cast, like, slow time. Uh, that, that is still acting funny. I just don't know why that is. All right, boing. All right, cool. Wonderful. Uh, we can get rid of all that, I think. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, to this. Uh, we can get rid of our test code. And that is saving and loading. All right. In the uh, in the final game, instead of just having a single file that only has all this, this is probably just going to be a like a component of what's in the in the save file. Uh, the way that it works in Wizard Ducks briefly is that each like there's a couple of different parts of the save file. There's a bit of metadata like the uh, what the like current date and time of your save was and um, that kind of thing. There's uh, obviously the, the the player stats, the player information is um, included in there. And then like for each map, it's also gonna iterate over each map and then save like the, the state of each enemy or whatever, uh, whether or not a puzzle has been completed, that kind of thing. And um, that's working pretty well for me in Wizard Duck, so I have no reason to not to do it any differently in here. But I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, let's see. Should I do, uh, we can mark these as completed. Should I do, wait, no, I, d I didn't say on hand. I said, oh dear. Um, I, I've done that before. Anyway, game state and inventory is done. Um, this is where in previous milestones, I've done like a, a post-mortem-ish, a milestone review of the, um, of the milestone, but honestly, game state and inventory went pretty pretty smoothly. Uh, there weren't any interesting hurdles to speak of. This really is just managing some data. And I'm not planning on making this game scale to enormous sizes or anything like that. So, um, like, I didn't have any like really interesting challenges with creating like modular game data systems or anything like that. Again, if I was spending 40 hours a week on this game, I probably would, but. For a, game, for a game that's just being made a half hour on Wednesdays every week for two years. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. But yeah, uh, that was fun. Uh, next time we're going to move on to some other types of interactions. Uh, I've got floors and floor buttons or pressure plates or levers or switches or something like that. Um, I'm going to probably try and like create some more test levels, some more interesting test levels. Um, I have uh, this Christmas coming up uh, a pair of 11 hour car rides. Uh, going to uh, going to visit my sister for the holidays and uh, mom and I are probably going to be swapping on and off taking turns uh, During that trip and I'll probably be brainstorming some ideas for other interactions during then Don't want to go too crazy. Uh, in fact, I think I should probably just like allocate 
Um, oh no. If this was farther in the future, I would allocate like 15 points for other types of interactions so that the, uh, so that the burned arm chart's a little bit more accurate, but since I'm going to be doing this soon, I, I don't think I will. Codex thinks this game is going to take 800 years to make, and while it does feel like that sometimes, I have no idea why it's, uh, I have no idea why it keeps setting its velocity to zero. So that's it. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Um, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Look for the 0 0.37 release. Uh, that's going to be uh, the stuff that I got done today. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a game, which is this. I like to focus on the weird 3D things you can do in Game Maker, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.